Hello, this is Mike, God Need Enough Dice, and this is the Kerbal Space Program. Now, uh, my current problem is that the aluminium rhinoceros, which is my tourist taxi, uh, with four civilian kerbals, is currently stuck on the moon with no fuel. It also doesn't have a transfer stage waiting for it in orbit to take it back to Kerbin, because either I cleaned it up accidentally when I was in the tracking station and I saw aluminium rhinoceros debris and I just hit delete. Or when I uh, originally decoupled from it, I had to, to be quite vigorous with that, uh, which actually does not make me terribly confident for docking with it later on, but never mind. Um, so I may have just put it into an unstable orbit and may have crashed. I don't know, it's not there. So even if the aluminium rhinoceros gets off the surface of the moon, it will not have enough to enough delta V to get back home. So it needs a new transfer stage, but it also needs fuel to get off Kerbin, and uh, get off the moon in the first place. So I'm launching a little thing to do both of those, to fix both of those problems. So down, we're going to start at the the, tran the new transfer stage. So rocket fuel, more fuel than I took with me in the first place. Um, some of my, it turns out some of my tourists want to do a flyby of Minmus, so I may or may not do that. But I'll have the option to do, to do that. Um, solar panels, uh, great big reaction wheel, probably bigger than I need, but it fits the size, so I'm chucking that on. Uh, big battery, uh, a core, and uh, this is a Probodon Octo 2. The main reason for that is, in order to facilitate docking, I want this bit to be as stationary as possible. I want it to be nice and steady and I can point it either you know prograde or retrograde or normal or anti-normal. Uh, specifically so that it's going to be in a nice solid uh, stationary position for the aluminium rhinoceros to dock with. Uh, decoupler and you can't quite see it because of the you've got fairings here. That's a heat shield and then a quad port, and a quad port is a sub-assembly that I have made. I don't know why I call it a quad port, there's five of them. But it's a single, it's a docking port and five, and, and four docking ports on either side. I suspect that's why I call it a quad port. But there's a total of five of them. And by making that a sub-assembly, that means if I make two of them, then I know they'll, they'll line up and they'll link up, and I don't have to be clever or anything. Uh, so eventually what is going to happen is that it will hopefully link up with the aluminium rhinoceros. It may go past Minmus, I don't know, I haven't decided that yet. Um, I want you to get the contract and, and the lovely, lovely money that comes with it, but I can do that later if I really must. Um, but then when I get to when I get back to Kerbin, uh, I'll decouple and then the rhinoceros will jump. The only thing attached to the bottom of the rhinoceros will be the heat shield, and that should be enough to get it down safely. But the aluminium rhinoceros is not currently attached to it. What is currently attached to it is this thing, which you may or may not recognize. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up this. Um, the What this is, it's just the, the mining rover. It's just the mining rover um, with the struts deployed and the whole thing um, upside down. I meant to do a merge so I could have them both side by side, but I'm an idiot, so there you go. load that up. I could have merged there actually. But anyway, so that's all that is. That's, so that's just the the rover um, upside down with the, the, the legs retracted. Um, it's got a quad port on top of the um, the core. So, the, so that means it, that it now fits nicely. And struts, obviously, struts all over the place, just in case. And what I've also done is I've, I've placed some uh, command chairs on there, just in case I want to ferry kerbals around. 
Uh, so what I need to do is I need to chuck another decoupler on the bottom of this, and then I need to merge it with the um, my other sub assembly. It's got a lifter, which is the aluminium rhinoceros lifter. So I just need to. Um, oops, did not mean to do that. Oh well. Uh, I just need to chuck a decoupler on there, and then a fairing, and then that, and then hopefully I'll be good to go. Right, after a bit of um, hassle, I did eventually get this um, working. I had a bug, I'd installed KOS wrong, um, basically said that you're supposed to install mods to the game data uh, folder on your, your Kerbal install. Um, and I managed to install it uh, below, so it's like instead of game data cost, it was game data, game data cost, and I had another cost, and I think that caused confusion. Had this weird thing with the fairings, like I couldn't fit, if you put a fairing on, um, you'd get a, another fairing down the bottom, which you couldn't do anything with, and the fairing, you know, when, you, when you're in the VAB, and you the fairings, they, they kind of come apart, and you click inside, and you couldn't do that, and it all went horribly wrong. That, that's now seemed to fix itself, so... This is just the aluminium rhinoceros launcher uh, attached to the fairings. I've put um, Werner engines on, which I didn't have before. Uh, right. See what happens, eh? Well, it's not exactly responsive. <laughs> Trying to keep the thrust to weight ratio at about one and a half, one point five. Uh, and again, the main thing, I'll oh, get rid of all these. Although I need to, the 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 Duna thing is coming up, so yeah. But yeah, um, I need to be very careful. Like I think this is one where I need to be very careful like keeping it below uh, three hundred meters a second. Gently, gently. Get an idea of how much effort it's taking to keep it on course by where the arrows are in there. Crashing out the sky will do me in the minute. Being very pedantic about the throttle. Perfectly honest, at about this this level, I can probably afford to go faster. I really do need to sort out when I can just go full throttle. I 
things are coming out of the fairing there, which is a bit worrying. forever. Right, might as well open up a bit more. I believe error uh, I believe the aerodynamics changed in one point oh point four. But I don't know how much. Uh, okay. Well, if I'm not flipping out 500 meters a second, then I might as well just go for it. I think I want to go nose up a bit. So I'm turning on my Werner engines to nose up just a bit more than I have been. To get my apoapsis, time to apoapsis higher. Twenty-five kilometers, which is a generally when I mean what I've seen. That's when you should start thinking about um, ditching your fairing. Here that I got a reload frame rate in a minute, uh, possibly because I just chucked a whole bunch of stuff uh, off my spacecraft. So I'm nosing up. Uh, because my time to carry abscess is going the wrong way. Some heating, it's like. So possibly I am going too fast in this part of the atmosphere, but I should be coming out of that fairly soon. Uh, my ascent profile is not pretty. Getting reheating, I think I should throttle down a little. Well, not reheating, it's, it's heating, sorry. It's, I keep saying reheating like it's re entry heating, but that's not what's going on. Um, I keep feeling my frame rate's really low. Which is why things are taking forever. Right, 
that's coming up, which I want it to do. According to this, I'm still basically going sideways. Actually, really raising. My um, retrograde vector, my prograde vector. Right, no, no, no. What I'm doing is stupid. I'm going to burn up and explode. It's going to go just straight prograde for a bit. The problem is that's lowering my uh, time to apoapsis. Uh, it's not what I want. I'm getting these reheating, reheating effects, but I'm not getting the. Um, that's interesting. But I'm not getting anything. Uh, I'm not getting the heat uh, display. So I don't know. It's still vaguely going up, which is the main thing. Going at Mach 3, nearly Mach 4. Uh, yeah, now this is saying time elapsed 3 minutes. It's been like 12. So um, everything's running really slowly. I don't know whether that's mods, I don't know whether it's the part count. That's really weird. I'm beginning to run out of uh, time to periapsis again, which I don't like. I'm going to try and lift the nose again. That looks horrible. I don't know if that's good or bad. I just I don't know if this is in fact a problem or if it's just graphics or if it's if I'm actually getting um, heating. Uh, I'm not getting any temperature gauges. Frame rate is apart from abysmal. Over Mac four. Not a huge amount of, of force, um, you know. So I'm keeping steady without using a huge amount of, of effort to do so. so. Get nose up a little bit more. Again, that's just getting too low. I don't know what's happening. Is 
that really looks like it's giving me shock heating, but I don't think I should be getting shock heating at 38 kilometers. Not at the speed I'm going. I'm not getting any heating indicators. So I don't know. Alright, let's just get put the pedal to the metal. I'm just, I yeah, it looks looks to be graphical rather than actual. I can't remember. There's a thing that shows you what the actual heating is, uh, like you have a, like a thermal camera view. I don't know how to do that. Right, so my time to apoapsis is coming up nicely. So now I'm going to deliberately go prograde. Four minutes have elapsed. I'm not convinced by this shock eating thing. I don't know what's going on here. Mac five. Mac six nearly. I'm just going to stick at the horizon uh, until it tells me I've got like 75k or there are boots. Yeah, it's cheerfully telling me I've got reheating effects, but I just don't, I don't believe it. I think it's a lie. Well, never mind. Oh, no, I'm not going to time warp. Um, which does mean I've got a bit of a wait. But I just, uh, I'm, I'm getting, that is a heating gauge there. One thing's a bit hot, but nothing else is. Also, there's a graphics glitch here, as you can see. I may have to go through my mods again. But uh, I think I'm going all right. Um, let's deliberately point prograde. Uh, check my fuel situation. Specifically check our electric charge situation. Got a lot because there's like two great big batteries. Because I've got two things which I've given great big batteries to. Uh, precisely so that they don't actually need much in the way of, of refueling and such. Um, I was going to look underneath it. but. To see if there's actual scorching. There's not scorching. It's all it's all wacky graphical stuff. Looks like things aren't being rendered in necessarily the right order. So I think that's the atmosphere. Yeah, they're getting this kind of curve on there, which is the atmosphere. 
Uh, okay, so I'm beginning to lose the shock heating effect, which is nice. I'll grant you. Um, allegedly, only four minutes have gone. Uh, nearly, it's nearly five minutes uh, since we started. So. Right, so I'm just going to wait for my um, apoapsis. Not well, not my apoapsis, but I'm, I'm going to wait till I've uh, left officially left the atmosphere. That was pretty. Uh, at which point I'll start um, arranging for circularization and such like. I don't know why everything is running so slowly. I wonder if there's something I'm doing wrong. <sighs> well, I got to this this height, so it's all. Woo. I presume that's the start field. Oh, it looks like I'm going to be okay once I'm out of atmo out of atmosphere. Uh, I, in theory, should extend my solar panels at some point, but uh, I might wait until this weird graphical nonsense has gone away. Right, that's that's that done. Uh, I've got a pretty flat uh, trajectory as it stands. going to do. Uh, time to make burn. So um, that's a pretty circular orbit. I mean 113 uh, delta V. Oh, I've done that. Let's turn that off. Let's turn that off. There we go. I was confused why it just kept coming back. It's because it was set to go to prograde, not um, not stabilize. I take it it's a bit wibbly wobbly, which is why it's not particularly happy about staying in place. Uh, 112, admittedly I only have 162 delta V in the tank, um, but it's all good. And then we can start thinking about um, getting to the moon, or the mun. No, no, I keep, I, I pronounce it mun, but moon, mun, 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 I suppose it's mun, M-U-N, mun. Go to the mun. So yeah, I do not know why that took so... why my frame rate is so very low. It's about one and a half, I would say, off. Well, maybe even not in that. Two, one. That was slightly early there, actually. Uh, 77 by 74, that will do. Uh, I need to get rid of those. I'm going to have to... My staging is probably all kinds of whacked out and crazy. Um, What is this engine actually? Alright. 
anyway. Uh, that took an enormous length of time. Um, just to... that was kind of really stressful. Because I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, so I'm going to say uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please hit like and subscribe if you've been enjoying these videos. Uh, you can find Nearly Enough Dice, which is our role-playing game theme podcast and blog. You can find that at nearlyenoughdice.com. And uh, we're also on Facebook and Twitter, so if you just search for Nearly Enough Dice on Facebook and Twitter, you'll find us there. And finally, even if um, your rocket looks like it's on fire, reach for the stars.